Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are on theme. We have 80s music playing, we have 80s vibes, hopefully I tried, and we have sort of spooky lighting. Long story short, 80s everything. That's like where my head's been at for the past like week or more. Today we're gonna be drawing the Stranger Things characters in different cartoon styles. The dynamic is pretty simple. We're gonna take a character from the show and then we're gonna pick a cartoon show and then I'm gonna draw this character in this style. Super simple. I've done this before, if you haven't seen it, here it is, I did it with Euphoria, so you should check that one out. I think today we're gonna be doing five or six, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a second part, so if you want a second part, let me know in the comments. And to ease ourselves into this, let's like briefly talk about the season. In my opinion, it's insane. I am obsessed with Max. I am obsessed with the ending sequence from episode four. You know what happened, if you watched it, you should have watched it. It literally gave us one of the best TV moments, let's say in this century, because of like everything of that scene, you know, like the soundtrack, the whole underlying theme of like mental health. So this goes beyond a show of just like kids trying to kill monsters or kill aliens. So I don't know, to me it's just like, and there's really no need to say this, but I will say it anyway. Most likely there will be some soft spoilers ahead, so proceed with caution. So to start, we're gonna go with Will. Obviously he's the catalyst, kinda, in a way, even though he's not the catalyst of all this. But basically, he's the one that disappears in season one, and then the show starts happening. Now he's all grown up. Um, this season, in my opinion, he doesn't have like a really big journey, it's like a little bit boring. But since he was like, that kid who got lost, and like, the kid who survived, or whatever, I'm gonna draw him today. And the show I'm gonna put him in, or the style, or the movie, is the Tim Burton style. Could be Corpse Bride, it could be The Nightmare Before Christmas, could be any of those movies. In my opinion, it's like a very recognizable style. Very spooky, big white eyes with like, tiny, tiny black pupils. All of the characters are very skinny, very bony. They look very creepy, but at the same time cute. It's like that we are in between, etc, etc, etc. So let's just like start drawing Will. All right, so I think one of the most recognizable features of him, it's like the coconut head or haircut. Now he has like a very defined jawline, and then we're gonna draw him holding his backpack. The whole season he's been carrying this sort of like tube, which I assume has like a drawing, because you know, Eleven said at the beginning that he's been painting. So let's put that painting back here. And then for the cleanup of this, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, because if you see the references that I have like shown you, all these are like puppets, you know, made with clay and like actual cloth and blah, 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 blah. But I still wanted to, you know, like put in that extra mile and challenge myself a little bit and try to render it like as close as possible, so we're gonna do like a 3D-ish render. So let's start by blocking our colors, and then we will start shading. I'm gonna make his skin like very bluish. I know he's not like dead or anything, but I mean, he's the kid who came back from death. I think this makes sense, so let's just roll with this. And then I'm going to add a few textures, some hair textures, some like cloth textures, some like felt textures to make it a little bit more realistic. So let's do that. Let's add a few more textures here and there. And I think we're done with him. Here's Will on his own in Tim Burton style. I definitely think it took a lot longer than I was expecting. Now let's see him inside of a scene with some of the characters from Corpse Bride. Even though obviously he's like a 2D render, not like a real life puppet, I think this does the job, and I think it looks like he belongs in that world. And now that we're done with our first character, let's move on to our second. And now it's time for Dustin. Dustin Henderson. I think Dustin is my favorite character from the entire show, since the beginning. And he's the one that I'm like the most excited to draw today, because I don't know, he's like so passionate. He's the one who always like figures out everything and helps the others out. And the show that I have like chosen for him, it's also a show that I really, really loved when I was a kid, which is Lilo and Stitch. Fun fact, I named my dog after that show, but then my mom made me change the name because it was like too hard. If you've watched this show, you cannot tell me that Dustin wouldn't be going around with Lilo and Stitch trying to capture all the experiments. Also, probably he would be in the lab working with Jumba, making like all these like weird gadgets and technology to like help Lilo and Stitch. So I think this is the perfect match. I am correct and you know that. This is a Disney movie and also a Disney show, but it does look a little bit different from your typical Disney movie, mostly because I think the director here, which is Chris Sanders, really injected his own style in this movie. Obviously, let's just start with the head, 
and the body. And then regarding the style, Chris Anders' style, it's very round, very bulky arms, very like thick legs, round nose. So we're gonna bring all that into dusting. We're gonna put him in the Hellfire Club shirt, which actually I inspired my outfit on that today. Here are some references of that. This really shows the effort that I'm putting into this video. And then he always wears an open button down. All right, we're gonna give him the radio device he always carries with him to communicate with his friends. But in this imaginary universe, he's gonna use it to communicate with Pleakley or Jumba whenever they're out and about hunting for experiments. Also, wait, he's definitely missing one thing that really is gonna like make Dustin Dustin, which is this is little Superman curl. There it is. And now that's Dustin for sure. Anyway, let's just clean this up. The Chris Sanders style and like the style of the movie is very simple, very thin lines, you can barely see them. I gave him some sandals because he's gonna be in Hawaii, you know, he's gonna be in and out of the sand, he needs to be practical. Um, these characters have like barely any shading, so that's amazing for me. Yeah, let's just quickly add some color. I'm gonna add like Hawaiian flowers on top of that shirt. So we adapt his style into the Little One Stitch world. <gasps> Wait, no, this is so good. Here he is in a little one stitch background. I cannot deal with this. This, no, I cannot believe this. Like I knew it was going to be the perfect match, but like, it's so perfect. Now let's just put him with the rest of the cast. He blends in really well in my opinion against the watercolor backgrounds from the movie. Genuinely, I do believe this is the best thing I've ever done in my life. Probably this is just like eight or nine year old Marcel like freaking out inside of me, but yes. All right, let's just now calm down. I need to calm down. And actually for the next character, we're not doing one character. We're gonna be doing a duo. Robin and Nancy, which in my opinion now they have become this sort of like female empowerment sisterhood situation and they're just like showing the guys that they can like take over and call the shots and still make everything work probably better. And the show that I decided to put them on, it's the most iconic crime related cartoon show in history. I'm gonna give you three seconds for you to guess. One, two, three. If you guessed Scooby-Doo, you're correct. If you didn't, Check your pop culture. Anyway, let's briefly go over the similarities between the two shows. Robin and Nancy could be the new Vilma and Daphne. Daphne has like a lot of interest in the popular hot guy, Nancy, Steve, and then we have like Robin, who's like a full on lesbian. And then we have Vilma, which is like an alleged lesbian. It makes sense. The style of the show is like pretty bland in my opinion. It's pretty much humans without a lot of stylization. But I think it was a thing of that era, you know, like Johnny Quest, Scooby-Doo. Anyway, a lot of talking, so let's get to drawing. So for these two, I think Nancy always has like this very assertive attitude. Like she's not afraid of anything, I think, these days. In season one, she was, but like I think she's grown to be very brave. And then Robin, she's always sort of like a little bit with her head up in the air. She gets the job done really well, but at the same time, she's like very like clumsy. And then I'm gonna give Robin a tie, suspenders, because she always likes to dress very like masculine. For the render style, we're gonna stick to this one reference we have here, because the show itself has been through a lot of iterations and probably a lot of seasons where they change artists and whatever. It seems very simple, it's just like black, thick outline with very simple bold colors inside. There's no shading, which I'm always like very happy for. This seems to be simple, but this sculpted line, it's actually way harder than I thought it was going to be, but we're pushing through. Also, one of the details that I noticed of this style, it's the way they do the folds in the clothing. Look at like Daphne's arm, Freddy's legs. And if you're ever interested in trying to emulate someone else's style or like some cartoon show style, there's always like tiny little things that really help to tie characters together in a show. All right, and then also let's add lights to these flashlights. All right, and I think I'm done with them. Here's Nancy and Robin placed on top of an original Scooby-Doo background. I think it's original, I don't know, Google told me that. And now let's just place them next to the rest of the characters. I do think they blend in. I think they seem to belong in there. And now let's just do a test of them with Scooby, because I think it'll be fun, right? I think that could be a really solid team. So Scooby, if you're watching and like one day your gang goes missing, you can call Nancy and Robin and they will help you out for sure. And now for our fourth, but actually fifth 
character, I want to do Max. And I think she deserves more than just this. I have to give Max her moment. And that's why I decided to draw her in my style. I wanted to do my twist or my take on the iconic scene that I've been talking since the beginning. Here's how it turned out. I'm not gonna be going over the process here. But if you want to see a little behind the scenes of that, you can find it on TikTok. Here's my TikTok. Also on TikTok, like I did it with the Kate Bush running up the hill, which YouTube doesn't let me put here. So blame YouTube, not me. All right. And with that said, let's move on to our next character, which probably by now, you know who it is. It's finally time for the queen of it all, our superhero, our lady and savior, Miss Eleven. I was very hesitant on what show to put her in, but I'm going to play a wild card here. It's Dragon Ball Z. I know, I don't know if you were expecting that, I don't know if it makes sense to you, to me it makes sense. Here's why. Eleven probably in the Dragon Ball Z world will be held at Capsule, or would work with Capsule, which is like Bulma's tech company or something like that. Or the other theory would be that she would be family of the androids, which are actually named 16, 17, and 18. Well, she could be Android 11. Also, I definitely imagine Eleven being friends with Trunks and with Gotten, this little duo here. And then looking at the style of this show, it's like pure anime. And as a kid, yes, this was one of my favorite shows ever. Little seven-year-old me or six-year-old me, it's currently freaking out. And he's so excited. Also, this makes me sound like a complete geek, but I guess I am. Anyway, let's just get into this. I'm gonna go with the 11 from the flashbacks, which is like older 11 mixed with like young 11 back at the lab. I chose to put her in the hospital gown, which is I think how she spends most of the season because she's trying to regain her powers. Again, I warned you about the spoilers. And the biggest thing I really wanna capture is her like iconic fighting pose. This. A few landmarks that we need to hit to capture the style. It's like the eyes, they have like very specific eyes. Then the tiny little pointy nose. Now let's quickly add some color and some shading, which will be simple. And then here on the hair, let me add a few more details to really bring that resemblance from like a little peaks. And then the final thing that will add that last touch, it's we have to do the bloody nose and the bloody tears. So let's add those in. Very sad, yet very beautiful. And there we have Eleven. I'm gonna put her in one of the backgrounds of the show. Here she is next to Gotten and Trunks, like I said earlier, and I think they will be really best friends. And then, for my fellow Dragon Ball Z fans out there, I'm gonna give you Super Saiyan Eleven. Here she is with the blonde hair, with the whole energy cloud situation. I don't know if this was like what you were expecting for Eleven, but for me, it really fulfilled my seven-year-old fantasy. Anyway, with that said, that was all we had for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I know we have a lot of characters left to do. We have Mike, we have Joyce, we have Hopper, we have Lucas, a lot of them. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Tell the algorithm to notice me. I'll see you in the next one.